and we're at uh, 7.30. And uh, let's get my... Uh, Dorothy, did you bring your bookmarks? I did. Um, these, are, these are just watercolor. And then they're sprayed with a gold mm. that's kind of like... Gold and steel. Yes. Okay, there it's focused. Okay, that's it. It's just water, the watercolor paper dipped in watercolor, and then it's sprayed with this thing that's like silly string, only it's gold. Uh huh. You can do it on anything. All right. These other ones are, are hand painted um, with flowers. Oh, oh those pretty. I got dibs on one. Uh oh, listen to her. <laughs> You put, you'll put her to work, Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, uh, uh, Dorothy, who do you give them to? Our customers. Oh, okay. They come into the shop? Anybody who yeah. makes a purchase gets a bookmark. Oh, mm -hmm. does anybody make them besides you? Oh, yeah, we all do. Oh, okay. Yeah. I well, wanted Dorothy special. Let me welcome everybody here tonight and anybody that's watching it tomorrow. We love getting together. Uh, Marsha was... Uh, Martha was talking to me and saying how uh, she enjoys the early part where, before we start talking, uh, that some of our best conversations take place in our little powwow. But uh, uh, we're here tonight to uh, do commun communicate together and get closer, and that's what our little support group is all about. Lisa uh, is always... Uh, harping on how important the support is because of how important it was to her. Um, Lisa had Dr. Murphy. Everybody here knows about Dr. Murphy, her first client, right? Yeah, so update us on Dr. Murphy, Lisa. We talked to him last night. So he is at six weeks and has lost 30 pounds. Nice. <laughs> oh, and he is so thrilled with the program and we were actually talking last night and Connie was, was talking to him about maybe incorporating this with his business. And, and uh, he has uh, one of his nurses that's kind of started to do this to the traditional way and was saying that she was discouraged. So after our conversation last night, he was going to go back and talk to her. And, and Connie and I were just discussing one of the best videos we were going to send her. But he, he's just so... Uh, on it he, he's working the program he's, he's faithful with everything and he's so pleased with the results and he's so tickled i just sent you the, the newest pictures and he is he is looking fabulous i can't believe that is that in my email or is that in my I, I said it, I sent it to your phone but i can email it if you want me to do that oh no that's okay when we're doing the uh video tonight i'll, I'll see if i can't get it and at the very end uh, share it um the thing with dr uh dr murphy is he didn't want to over uh wish for himself and uh when we were doing our three-way calls and stuff he was just going to be happy if he could do this much and mm -hmm. he's realizing he can do whatever he wants and that's how he goes on and on in the call is that he never thought at 60 something that he would ever see this weight again but not only that and da, 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 da. and he is also going on a cruise and he's really worried about going <laughs> <laughs> and treat and treating himself but we all know i went on a cruise but i was in a challenge and i actually didn't hurt myself i lost weight when i was there i do believe it was like two pounds so that wow. would be, terrible to be on a cruise and lose weight let me tell you um but, but as we sat there and we talked we we um uh he agreed that he has he, he has made better choices and he's going to continue to make better choices even though he thinks he's not going to i don't think <laughs> patients will be too much for him and I told him go ahead and go on a, a two and four while you're on the cruise so you can have breakfast with your wife and whoever's on the cruise and uh, and have that dinner at the end of the day and then just sup supplement it with the four and then when he gets back home he can get back on it he's getting very close to where he wants to be anyway but it's really fun to watch somebody who's uh, doing something they thought was long since past not going to ever happen again and now they feel that they actually are in control and accomplishing something so let's go ahead and share the screen and get started here tonight Ooh, let's do some sound down here because we're going to need that. 
And tonight we're going to do our sharing. We'll go a little bit over Meltdown Challenge. There's not a whole lot that you can share with Meltdown Challenge anymore. We're going to talk a little bit about mastery. And um, I'm not going to do the biology tonight because i got a little video I'm going to share with you. And the success story is a success story with a sad ending. But it's such a, a, such a human interest story, I think, that you will be glad that you got to share in it. I'm going to share my screen. Everybody can see it, yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So tonight, um, this is the little statements that I started. And you can pick one or you can go through however many of them you want to share with. It's only in telling our stories that we can love each other better. And I truly believe that. And I, this is my favorite part of this. Mm -hmm. um, the statements are the quality I admire most in a friend is... If I could change the world in some way, it would be. What I think children should be taught in school is, if I won the lottery, I would use the money too. And what I really want to share is. And so I, I will just take the first one. Uh, the quality I admire most in a friend is um, being able to trust them, like being able to... Uh, no, they got my back no matter what. And when you have one friend like that, you're truly blessed. And if you have more than that, then, you know, and then we, we in this group, we in this group, we have become each other's friends and we have each other's back. That's the one I would share. You want to take one? Yeah, if I could change the world in some way, it would be for everyone to care about other people's feelings. We seem to okay. That's nice. people without realizing, and then we go, oops. <laughs> I would like to see that. Yeah. yeah. Who wants to go next? I will. Go ahead. Um, what I want to share is my daughter's supposed to come up here and visit this weekend. Dawn. Hey. 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 <laughs> That's cool. Who's next? I'll go. Um, what I think children should be taught in school is to be um, more caring for others. Um, the bullying in school is so bad now um, that they should be taught to love one another and to find the best qualities in the, um, for their classmates. That's nice. Marsha, we okay. missed you last um, week. Okay. If I won the lottery, I would use the money to donate really heavily to the um, animal wel uh, welfare uh, places that I, I have uh, that I'm interested in because they could use so much money and so much help, and I feel bad I can only donate like a little bit every month to them. Very but I, I would do that. Yeah, I can see that. I, that would be one of my uh, chosen things to do. I and maybe open up an animal rescue uh, place. You have opened up an animal rescue. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> but, I mean, you mean another one. A big another one on a larger <laughs> capacity. Yeah, that really makes a difference. You get more land, huh? <laughs> you know, uh, Marsha, I, I have a dream, you know, uh -huh. of building an atrium where the yes, trees yes. and the birds can get in there and they can do whatever they want. I wouldn't have to worry where they pooped and they, yes. yeah, I and they'd be safe. Yeah, I really mm -hmm. hate having cage mm -hmm. birds. And that's like a dream I have. It's not gonna exactly. happen. Exactly me I too. Talk about it. But I would yeah. love to have an atrium where my birds could be free. Yes. Yes. Um, Dick, how about you? Well a year ago I went to a heart doctor. Me and my wife were in, sitting down there waiting. We never seen so many heavy, heavy, heavy people. Wow. And I could just wish for that somebody would do something. And uh, I thought about coming back with the picture, my picture on the weight, and all, but it didn't seem right to go to the doctor. I don't know. Well, you have impacted a lot of lives. I could sit here and give you a list of people who have improved their health as a result of what you did and modeled for them. Yeah, that's nice, Dick. Lisa. So what I really want to share is that uh, it seems like 
get started, I, I noticed that I got my first Metafast order three years ago. And at that time, I wanted uh, to be eating healthier because I don't. Now, being in the hospital with my mother, it's, it's funny the things that I take for granted, simple things like being able to fix my hair, being able to dress myself, being able to put deodorant under my arm, being able to keep myself clean, being able to take a shower. Um, and so not only am I inspired to get in the best health I can get in to prolong, put off the part where I need to be taken care of as long as possible, but I really want to help others to find health. To The, the situation in this nursing home is just heartbreaking. Oh, I it's know. heartbreaking. It's certainly a, a lesson, isn't it? Yes. And Dom? Gosh, so hard. I'll probably do them all again. The quality I love most in a friend is trust and honesty. Um, if I could change the world in some way, it would be for people to love and not judge. Woohoo! What I think children should be taught in school is to care love have manners and respect if i won the lottery i would use the money to help my family for other people who've been in the conditions i am uh food banks and uh like marsh to uh the animal shelters and what i really want to share is i'm extremely excited about getting to go up north and see my family oh that's great <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's always they, great. They have, they they have always always can't see faces. Nope. Okay. So now we oh, Is Jan there? Yeah, Jan there. Jan, there. Jan, there. Jan you wanna you wanna share with us? Sure, sure. What I really what wanna I really share, share is how grateful, how grateful I am. Grateful I am. For this, for this group of people, group of people, and that I got, I got, and then I got in my end. My end. That's nice. Thank you. Is there anyone else present that I'm not aware of? Because I can see no faces. Cheryl. Cheryl. She's here. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl. I seen it said Cheryl Tarbox joined. Yeah. Can is she can you see her? I can't see anybody, but I just saw she joined. Oh, okay. I can only see whoever's talking. I can see Cheryl. Cheryl, do you want to share with us? Maybe she doesn't have sound. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Is that is that pretty much everybody that's here? Yeah. Okay. Cheryl, did you get I mean, you can't get in here. There you are. You're here. Can you hear? Can you see us? Do you hear us? <laughs> I think I'm going to have distraction. Okay. All right. We're going to go on to the next slide then. Uh, the team's in second place. Good job, everyone. Um, Ooh. Yeah, I know already. That's that's really very good. Um, the uh, on the challenge wall this week <clears throat> uh, recipe photo contest. I know last time the, there were people who wished they had known about it in time because we cook dinner every night. No reason we can't share it uh, on the challenge wall, and other people enjoy mm -hmm. having something different to eat. So that would be nice. And then tonight in the Huddle Up, uh, Healthy Eating Made Simple, uh, Week 2 Challenge Huddle Up webinar. That starts at 8.30. And I did post a link in the Huddle Up for people if they want to get it there. And then it's also on the challenge wall. Any questions about that? Nope. All right. Uh, Optimal Health, it was our fourth annual. We met over here in front of the Cove. And uh, we started out with this many. And we ended up with this many, and we're the last one. 
It was nice to see David again. And we had a furry friend that walked with us. Uh, what we do on Optimal Health Day once a year, and Dr. Anderson now, it's been nationwide since the beginning. But now he's actually got it to where he's petitioning, putting a petition out there to draw awareness to uh, living a healthier life regardless of where you're at and getting you to the next level uh, and, and uh, helping you live a life of, um, of health as, as opposed to just existing and surviving. And we talk about that all the time. Uh, the one thing I thought we would talk about tonight because it's, it's really impacted me and I love the points that were made about by Jan about our room. I, I actually smiled inside when she said that because the greatest impact on your life is uh, your inner circle. Uh, you live more fully by expanding your inner circle, changing it to be more in line with your goals and aspirations. I have a whole circle of friends that have nothing to do with Ted Shape for Life. But as I have grown in Take Shape for Life, I have more in common with people in Take Shape for Life than I do the inner circle that I used to have. And in reality, uh, my temptations come from people who I used to hang with that haven't changed their healthy habits. And uh, I have moved. Oh, they, they've moved to the outer rings, and all of you guys have moved to my inner ring. But does anybody want to, Dorothy, I know you talk about the five closest people to you. Uh, would you like to expand on this a little bit? Um, I, I really have a difficult time because most of the people in my circle are not in the challenge. Jan is in the challenge. Juan is in the challenge. Um, but my circle of friends are the people I'm trying to get in my inner circle. And um, it's difficult. It's difficult because their choices um, haven't changed. They're still, um, they still haven't been able to make health an important thing to them. So, um, you know, I, therein lies a problem. So I keep working at it. <laughs> Correct. Has anybody else noticed anything in terms of their inner circle as they have grown? Yes. The one thing I see that all of us look forward to is being with each other. The challenge is a side effect. Uh, the learning is a side effect. What I look most forward to and what I miss the most are the people in the room with us. Well, I didn't have an, I didn't have a circle, let alone an inner circle. So you all have become... <laughs> All my circles. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. Uh, I just wanted to, to share that with you because I know that it's changing in my life. And I hate, to, I hate that it's changing because the people I used to be very close to and that I'm not close to anymore, I see the impact they had on my life as a whole and it wasn't a positive impact. And the further out of my circle they get and the more I get around people who have like-minded thoughts, the better I am and what I want for myself. And so I think that it is true. The greatest impact on your life is your inner circle. And identifying the five people in your life that help you live the life that is, matters to you. And uh, maybe by focusing on that, we can move ourselves even more forward. Uh, tonight, I told you the success story I'm going to share is about a gentleman named Randy Posh. And he's a professor at the Carnegie Mellon University. I heard about him. I forget where someone called me and said, you got to listen to this guy. He, um, in his uh, college, he had a, he had a course that he taught. And in this course, he had people come in and do, uh, students come in and do lectures as if it was their last day on earth. And what is it they would say in their last lecture? And ironically, <laughs> he ended up with uh, cancer. And died very young at 2008. That's why this is a success story with a sad ending. But I've been thinking about him lately, and I, I was involved in his story when he was still alive. And I didn't think it was too late to share it. And that's, that's why I've got this. And what I, what I found, his lecture is actually an hour and a half. 
and mm -hmm. um, I will post it in the huddle up for anybody that wants to take the time to listen to the lecture. I have listened to it many times, and it definitely has changed me in the way I perceive life. Uh, but I found this 10-minute excerpt, and I haven't watched it. Uh, and much of what's in his lecture is in this excerpt, because I watched a few minutes of it. But it's 10 minutes, and so I'm just going to start it. So I'm reprising a talk that I gave in September at Carnegie Mellon University. There's an academic tradition called the last lecture. Hypothetically, if you knew you were going to die and you had one last lecture, what would you say to your students? Well, for me, there's an elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is that for me, it wasn't hypothetical. I've been fighting pancreatic cancer. It has now come back after surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. And the doctors tell me there's nothing more to do and I have months to live. These are my most recent CT scans. The pancreatic cancer has spread to my liver. There are approximately a dozen tumors. I don't like this. I have three little kids. Let's be clear, this stinks. But I can't do anything about the fact that I'm going to die. I'm pursuing medical treatments, but I pretty much know how this movie's going to end. And I can't control the cards I'm dealt, just how I play the hands. Now, if I'm not morose enough for you, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I don't choose to be an object of pity. And in fact, Although I'm going to die soon, I'm actually physically very strong. In fact, I'm probably physically stronger than most of the people in this audience. <laughs> so, today's talk is not about death. It's about life and how to live. Specifically about childhood dreams and about how you can try to achieve them. My childhood dreams, your childhood dreams. As a child, I had an incredibly happy childhood. I went back and raided the photo album, and I couldn't find any places where I wasn't smiling. Right? I just had a great childhood. And I was dreaming, always dreaming. It was an easy time to dream. When you turn on your television set and men are landing on the moon, anything is possible. And we should never lose that spirit. So what were my childhood dreams? Being in the National Football League, this is one of the childhood dreams I didn't achieve. All right? And it's very important to know that if you don't achieve your dreams, you can still get a lot by trying for it. There's an expression I love, experience is what you get when you don't get what you wanted. Now, I played Little League football for a long time, and I had a phenomenal coach, Coach Jim Graham. And he was old school. When I was at a practice, he rode me all practice. You know, you're doing it wrong, go back, do it again. You're sloughing off, you owe me push-ups just for two hours. It was relentless. And after practice, one of the assistant coaches came up to me and he said, yeah, Coach Graham rode you pretty hard. And I said, yeah. And he said, that's a good thing because it means he cares. When you're doing a bad job and nobody points it out to you, that's when they've given up on you. And that's something that's really stuck with me is when somebody is going to ride you for two hours, they're doing that because they care to make you better. So, next dream, Walt Disney Imagineering. When I was eight, my family took the pilgrimage to Disneyland in California. And it was this incredible experience, the rides and the shows and the attractions and everything. And I said, gosh, I'd like to make stuff like that when I get older. So I graduated from college and I tried to become an Imagineer. These are the people who make the magic. And I got a lovely rejection letter. And then I tried again after graduate school. And I've got all of these rejection letters over the years. <laughs> They're very inspirational. But then the darndest thing happened. You know, I worked hard and worked hard. And I became a junior faculty member, and I specialized in doing certain kinds of research. That's me. <laughs> and uh, I developed a skill that was valuable to Disney, and I got a chance to go there. And I was part of an Imagineering team, and we worked on something called Aladdin's Magic Carpet Ride. And it was incredibly cool. However, it took me over 15 years to do it, and lots and lots of tries. And what I learned from that is that the brick walls that are in our way are there for a reason. They are not there to keep us out. They are there to give us a way to show how much we want it. If you're going to have childhood dreams, I recommend you have good parents. <laughs> I lucked out. I have great parents. Uh, this is my mother on her 70th birthday. <laughs> uh, I am the blur in the back. I have just been lapped. <laughs> uh, this is my father on his 80th birthday. There is this notion of have fun all the time. Have a sense of fun and wonder. That should never go away. All right? 
My dad, what an incredible guy. Uh, he fought in World War II. He was clearly part of the greatest generation. Sadly, my dad passed away a little over a year ago. And when my mother was going through his things, that was when she discovered that in World War II, he was awarded the Bronze Star for Valor. In 50 years of marriage, it had just never come up. There's a real lesson in humility that I can learn from my father there. Now my mother. Mothers are people who love you even when you pull their hair. <laughs> and this was the kind of relationship I had with my mother. And my mother, speaking of humility, was always there to keep me in check. When I was going through graduate school and I was taking really hard examinations, I was home pretty much complaining and whining about how hard these PhD tests were. And she just patted my arm and she said, we know how you feel. Just remember that when your father was your age, he was fighting the Germans in World War II. <laughs> and then the day came when I got my PhD and I was so proud and my mother introduced me to everyone as, this is my son. He's a doctor, but not the kind that helps people. <laughs> Probably the, the most wonderful thing my parents did was they let me paint my bedroom. I said one day, I want to paint stuff on the walls. And they said, okay. So I had a rocket ship. And we lived in a ranch, so I wanted an elevator. I wasn't sure where it would go. And uh, yeah, you can tell the nerds early, so that's the quadratic equation. But the great thing is that they let me do it. And they felt that letting me express my creativity was more important than the pristine nature of the walls. And I was really blessed to have parents who saw it that way. My parents taught me about the importance of people versus things. So when I got older and I bought my first car and I was so excited, I had this shiny new convertible. This is my niece and nephew, Christopher and Laura. And every, every month I'd take them for a weekend. So my sister and her husband would get a little break and we'd go off on adventures. And I'd just shown up with my new car and my sister's explaining to Chris and Laura, now it's Uncle Randy's new car. You can't get it dirty. Da -da 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 -da. And they're just cracking up laughing because over her shoulder, I'm casually opening a can of soda and just emptying it on the back seat. And they come running over. My sister says, what are you doing? And I said, it's a thing. It's just a thing. And I'm really glad I did that because at the end of the weekend as I was driving them home, little Chris, who was about eight at the time, had had the flu and he threw up all over the back seat of my car. <laughs> and I don't care how much value you get out of owning a nice, shiny, pristine thing. It's not as good as I felt knowing that I made an eight-year-old boy not feel guilty just because he'd had the flu. Next thing, you better decide early on if you're a Tigger or an Eeyore. <laughs> Tiggers are energetic, they're optimistic, they're curious, they're enthusiastic and they have fun, and never, ever underestimate the importance of having fun. I am dying soon, and I am choosing to have fun today, tomorrow, and every other day I have left. If you want to achieve your dreams, you better work and play well with others, and that means you better live with integrity. Simple advice that you'll find hard to follow, just tell the truth. Second thing, when you screw up, apologize. There are a lot of bad apologies in America. A good apology has three parts. I'm sorry, it was my fault, how do I make it right? Most people skip that third part. That's how you can tell sincerity. The last thing is that we all have people that we don't like, that have done things we don't like, and what I have found is no one is pure evil. If you wait long enough, they will show you their good side. You can't make them do it in a hurry, but you can be patient. Show gratitude. When I got tenure as a young faculty member, there were about 15 young kids who'd been working in my research lab. I took them all down to Disney World for a week on my nickel. And one of my colleagues said, this must have cost you an arm and a leg. How could you do it? And I said, these kids just worked day and night for years so that I could get the best job in the world for life. How could I not do it? I mean, gratitude is a very simple thing, and it's a very powerful thing. And lastly, I don't think complaining and whining really solves the problem. This is Jackie Robinson, first black major leaguer, had it in his contract not to complain if people spit on him. All right? Now, I don't care if you're Jackie Robinson or if you're a guy like me who's only got a couple of months to live. You can choose to take your finite time and energy and effort, and you can spend it complaining, or you can spend it playing the game hard, which is probably going to be more helpful to you in the long run. Now, I told you this is part of the lecture series at Carnegie Mellon University, and it's important for you to know why I gave the talk. Okay? The talk isn't just about how to achieve your childhood dreams. It's much broader than that. It's about how to live your life. 
Because if you lead your life the right way, the karma will take care of itself. The dreams will come to you. If you live properly, the dreams will come to you. I think it's great that so many people have benefited from this lecture, but the truth of the matter is that I didn't even really give it to the 400 people at Carnegie Mellon who came. I only wrote this lecture for three people. And when they're older, they'll watch it. Thank you. Oh, if we could only face life like that, huh? God, yeah. Oh, wow. the lecture is amazing. He, he, and he, you know, and he, he, he explains that. Uh, you know, he's, he, he has a reality. You know, a lot of people who would look at somebody who could handle a situation that is dire as this in the way he's chosen to do it. He moved his wife back home in the same town where his mother, her mother is. He got her all set up in a house, you know, and he did do it so his kids could listen to that lecture when they're grown and can benefit from it. But everybody has benefit from it, and I'll put it there. And the one thing that he said why he did that, and I think why is so important in why all of us do anything we do. And if we figure out why we want to be healthy, then we might start acting <laughs> the part. Uh, I, I know I can speak for myself, and it's so easy to be sidetracked. And I think if we get our why in something and uh, living the way he said and not, sit, not looking for the constant bad in people, but knowing that everybody has good in them, uh, I think it can change all of us, and I think it's what we do here when we meet. I'm still being patient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to tell us what you're being patient about? The nice to turn up in the person. The good oh. to turn up in the person. <laughs> I get that. You know what person I'm referring to, but yeah. nobody else does. I get that, I get that Lisa. And you have <laughs> seen the good. You have seen the good. Yes. Now you have seen the good. Uh, and uh, so we just have to wait. Anybody like to say anything in closing? I want you to be able to uh, attend the uh, the next huddle up because I really do consider them better than ours. And I know, uh -huh. people in, I, know I know there's people in this room that won't agree with that. No. But, no. Uh, and, uh, and I have people who can't wait till tomorrow so they can see what we all did together tonight. And I want to thank everybody for coming and invite any last comments uh, any of you have. Get you one of these. I already <laughs> invited. I, I, I know, is that? I know they, that is just so cute. You put it here to get another one. Get one for Lisa you. Bought <laughs> yeah, Lisa bought Yeah, I bought everyone. I bought everyone they had at ORMC, Alma Palmer, and Winnie Palmer. Oh, uh, Jan, did wow. you get to hear? Did you get to hear the happy pill, Jan? No. This Thank is a happy did. pill. And when you squeeze his belly. That's what Tony does when you squeeze his belly. So uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what'd you say? Say that again. I said that's what Tony does when you squeeze his belly. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I had that actually by my bed, so the last thing I hear before I go to sleep at night is the laugh. Oh, that is <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Good night, everybody. Good night. night. Everybody Good night, Lisa. Good night.